Good morning, Britain. How bad is dentistry in your area? Well, new figures seen exclusively by Good Morning Britain reveal the worst areas in the UK for access to dental treatment, with Norfolk at the top of the list. People just can't get in, and when you do see them, they have escalating problems, and I can't do anything about it, really. So. A matter of life or death, anger grows as the police service of Northern Ireland admits to monumental data breaches in the second in weeks in Northern Ireland's chief constable due to face questions at an emergency meeting today. Wildfires tear through Hawaii, killing six and forcing residents to take refuge in the ocean to escape the flames. Meanwhile, Closer to home, firefighters in Portugal are continuing to battle blazes with more than a thousand people evacuated from their homes. He's been robbed at gunpoint and faced men with machetes. We've been closely following the journey of Russell Cook, otherwise known as the hardest geezer. He's on a mission to be the first person to run the full length of Africa. We're going to be checking in and finding out how he's doing just before eight o'clock. No fly zone after a woman in Brazil claimed she was banned from getting on a flight because she was wearing a bikini. Now, this morning we're debating if beach wear should be strictly for the beach only. Let us know what you think. And how does a little bit of warm summer sunshine sound? You'll have to be quick though because it's back to business as usual tomorrow. That and so much more coming up on Good Morning Britain. Thursday. 10th of August 2023, live from Television Centre in London, this is Good Morning Britain with Ben Shepherd and Ranbir Singh. Hi there, good morning, it's just gone six o'clock. <laughs> this is the thought of a woman wearing a bikini at an airport, which makes me, because I don't, I, if I'm on a sun lounger... Do you not check into your flights I, in a if, bikini? Don't even, not even on the beach, <laughs> never mind. I don't even check in near the lifeguard to get me towel. But I literally, if I'm on the, if I'm on the sun lounger, if I get, if I go, let's go and get a little, you know, diet coat from over there. I think, right, dress on, towel, Cut bag, yourself up. hat. Yeah. I'm literally like that. No, no, no. So, so the, I, I can't get my head into somebody wearing a bikini to an airport. I can't, I can't. Are, under, I think can't this, is, this was the person in, in question um, trying to check into a flight. You know, is that reasonable attire for a flight? I think when I went travelling, when I was about 18, 19, and I... Short tried... crush has been mugged. But, I, but you, there were rules. If you're in Australia, you can't get on the plane with a singlet on, what they would call a vest. Oh, you right. You have to put a T-shirt. You have to have some sort of sleeve on your arm because they don't like... If you're sat next to me, you don't want to be rubbing up against my skin, do you? Agreed. Uh, that, seemed, that seemed fair enough to yeah. me back then, clearly, for some people, though. Do you know what I find fascinating? We're going to be debating this later on. I only realised when I was reading this morning that in Sorrento, the mayor... Yes. Um, ..has banned it in the town, and you can be fined £425 if you're found wearing beach wear... In the town. In the town. Or if you're a man just with the top off. Yes. And it gets very hot over there. But in Italy, you imagine that that's going to be, it's all free-flowing. Yeah, but actually, no, they say it's about decorum. Yes. Mm. So should we be following the example of Sorrento? Uh, should we be only wearing beachwear on the beach? We're going to be debating that a little bit later on. It's not really a question for Great Yarmouth, is it? <laughs> I don't know, why not? Although today... Well, Ruth's got some weather for today, us. Today, it might well be sorted themselves question. out yesterday. A uh, big question, though, because if you... I mean, don't take the risk, Ranveer, of not being able to check in to your favourite airline in your bikini, which I know <laughs> is a worry for you, because there's a, new, there's a new service being done about the best things about staycationing... Go on, ..in the Hit UK. Of all the things, the best things about staycationing are being able to go to a beer garden in the country, have a nice pint... Yes. ..in a lovely country pub, and also some fish and chips on the beach. Oh. You know, as soon as you, you can smell it, yes, can't you? Right. Now you can smell the vinegar. And then you right can hear now. the seagulls circling above you. Yes, yeah, course. yeah, yeah. The, uh, the day, I mean, I know we've got the hardest geezer on, but we have to deal with seagulls in this country. Hardcore. Let me let you know, Russ. But that's the thing that we all love to do: being able to explore the country, go around National Trust properties. It's all, that, that's lovely all year round. I love, I love that in winter. Because any, always, time any weather, National Trust property always lifts your spirits. Let us know what your favourite things about staycationing in the UK are. Yeah, uh, loads of friends of mine have gone to Wales. Really? This year. Yeah, I've noticed that there's more people... Barry going... Bados. 
Barry Sefford. They're going Barry Bados. I love it. Who's Barry? <laughs> <laughs> well, mine going on all day with Barry. Ba go down, yeah. go down Barry Bados. <laughs> That's some beautiful parts of Wales, of course, yes. down to the southwest and all, actually all over the UK. The coastline is incredible. One person did did put in the uh, in the uh, survey that the best thing about uh, staycation is there's no luggage limits. So you can Agreed. take as much baggage as you like. I agree with that. So yes. do get in touch with us. What do you love about staycation? Yeah, it's, and that's a positive. I like that. Yeah. That's happy. And we'll get some, hopefully, some nicer weather for the next Please. day or so from Ruth a little bit later. Yes. Um, last time we were on together, I think we talked about the crisis in den NHS dentistry. Yes. And your stories at home were excruciating. They were. Uh, and there was... Hundreds of them. Absolutely. And our main news again is on that because there's some new figures that have been seen exclusively by Good Morning Britain. And they've revealed that the worst areas in the UK for getting dental treatment, Norfolk tops the list of so-called dental deserts, where 38% of patients have been unable to access an NHS dentist appointment for the last two years at yeah. least. Uh, and the British Dental Association say that across the UK, over 6 million adults have tried and failed to get dental treatment since 2021 in what it calls the gravest access problems it has ever faced. Well, Lorna Shaddock is in Norwich, in Norfolk. Uh, now, Lorna, we've got hold of these exclusive details and where you are right now is the worst place, isn't it? Just explain how bad it is.